once again to our show that is called Real Shame. And this month, this week, we're going into horror films. And more specifically this week, horror anthology films. And these are all movies that we haven't seen before, hence the show, show name Real Shame. Uh, and I haven't told you who I am. I am Adam. I am Andy. And so earlier in the week on Monday, we watched From a Whisper to a Scream. And if you want to know how we felt about that, check that review out. But the, Or watch Andy. Uh, if you wanted, but this week, you're watching a different movie that we're digging into. This, this week today. And that movie is going to be... The Vault of Horror. A coterie of British stars. I said it, a coterie. A coterie nice. of British stars appear in four macabre tales brought to you by the House of Amicus in the Vault of Horror. This elevator has no push buttons. And there's no way out. Someone's bound to come down here soon. Why not make the best of it? Good idea. Why not? Let's do that. Might as well, I suppose. Thank you. Strange situation. Almost like a dream. Dreams are much more frightening than this. At least mine are. Really? In what way? Strange. Mysterious. Unworldly. Almost unbelievable. Yeah? But so real. One feels sometimes that it's actually happening. Why don't you tell us about it? All right. I will. So The Vault of Horror was released in 1973. It was directed by a man named Roy Ward Baker, written by a man named Milton Subotsky. And Milton Subotsky was actually American. He and a guy named Max J. Rosenberg, who was also American, they founded Amicus Studios, Amicus mm. Productions, in England. And Amicus Productions, sometimes they're confused with Hammer Productions, which was another British production company that made a lot of horror films. But they're distinct. They're two different production companies. But they made similar movies. You know, they, made, they both made horror film, a lot of horror films type things. Amicus Productions did a lot of horror anthologies themselves. They did movies like The House That Dripped Blood, from Beyond the Grave, Asylum. A year before The Vault of Horror, they did Tales from the Crypt. Yep. Which, of course, Tales from the Crypt later on would be an HBO series that ran for seven seasons, starting in the late 80s and into the 90s. Tales from the Crypt, the title, and The Vault of Horror, the title, both come from EC Comics. They Those were two titles produced by EC Comics, along with titles like The Haunt of Fear, Weird Science, Shock, Suspense Stories. And I was reading that the four stories that are present in the Vault of Horror, actually three of them actually came from Tales from the Crypt, not yep. Vault of Horror. And the final story, I think, came from Shock Suspense Stories. Yeah, so actually no, none of the four stories came from the, the Vault, Vault of Horror. Of horror but yeah. nevertheless, who cares? They, they were packaged into this movie and, and released under the title The Vault of Horror. It acts as kind of a sequel to the Tales from the Crypt, which came out the year before, although they have none of the same characters, so you don't need to watch one before you watch the other. You don't need to watch them in any sort of or order. You what can watch what them, makes it a sequel? Free. Is it just is it the same, same just, cast? No, no. I mean, it, it has nobody in the same... It, it's it's basically a sequel in the sense that they're both EC Comics, and oh, they're both, okay. both both Amicus Productions. But I didn't know if like the, the rapper no. was the same. or No, no. none of that. Okay. Not at all. So, yeah, you, don't worry. If you watch The Vault of Horror, you don't need to have seen Tales from the Crypt or vice versa. Nothing, nothing like that. But uh, just like with from A Whisper to a Scream, we'll kind of break down story by story, and I guess the rapper story. The rapper story, I didn't think really... Does it have a name? I don't think it has a name. No, I just put rapper. I don't think it did. Oh. Uh, no, I don't, I didn't write one down if it did. Oh, and I said four macabre tales. It has five. Whoops. I, that's, that's a misprint on my part. I said they, they appear in four yeah. tales. There's five tales. I can't count apparently. <laughs> so there's five tales in this movie. So I know last time we kind of, do you want to do general thoughts about it and then dive in each one or you just want to go into each one? I will just go. We'll just go. We'll just go each one and then kind of sum it up wh whether we like, whether we liked it or not. So the rapper. The rapper story. Which you've is. you got. Yeah, go on. Uh, oh, I was just going to say, you, you've got the principal characters that are going to appear in these five stories all board an elevator and descend down to, I think, the sub-basement yep. 
where they there's kind of like a party room almost set up. Yeah, they, and they, they just sit down sit on a table and, and they begin recounting dreams or visions or whatnot that they've had that yeah. seem so real somehow. And the first story is well, let's, you want to talk or, about the rapper? Yeah, itself? well, I, well, you mean how it ends up? Oh no, like how you felt about it. Uh, I mean, that's fine. I, nah. It's 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 well to me because I've seen Tales from the Crypt, the one that came before this several times. In Tales from the Crypt, you've got people once again they're they're somewhere in England and they're touring some catacombs and I can't I think there's five stories maybe in the first in Tales from the Crypt. There's five people that branch off from the they get lost kind of in the catacombs. They find themselves in the crypt and there's a crypt keeper there. Although he looks not he's a human guy. He's not the crypt keeper oh. from the HBO series. Played by Ralph Richardson, and he's like, "Oh, why are you guys here?" Well, I'll tell you why you're here. And they go through each of their stories, and then of course at the end, it turns out they're all dead and in hell or something like that. So this is a similar kind of thing. They've descended basically yeah. down into hell. Yeah, and I've I, and I've pretty much had that pegged the yeah. moment. Well, I, yeah, it's it's not. But I haven't yeah. seen Tales from the Crypt. But yeah. okay, so that that's what kind of made it less good in my eyes was just oh. that I was like, okay, whatever. No. Yeah. I, I, I think it's kind of cool. I, I don't know. So the first story is a is vampire story. It called is. Called Midnight Mess. And this is from Tales from the Crypt number 35. Ah. Okay. Uh, so this story is basically about a, a, bro, a, brother, a brother and sister played by real life siblings. Yeah, Daniel understand. and Anna Massey. And uh, he like goes and defines his, his sister and uh, comes across this town where everything closes before dark, and that should give you a big, <laughs> right. like, <laughs> like a big neon sign saying, probably what what's going on. You yeah. know, anything that closes before dark, you're kind of like, okay, I know where this is going. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, finds out that uh, that uh, I guess what's his sister kind of, you know, uh, does she kick him out of the house? He like he, he leaves. Kills her. Oh yeah, he he stabs her. Yeah. Oh well, and, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, he stabs her, but she's, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, he kills her. Yeah, he and then, kills her. Then he goes to a restaurant that ends up being open, and then orders. And they have like this whole course set down, and <laughs> he's like, "Oh, it tomato. all tastes funny, and it, it all looks like, like blood. It's all tomato juice." And Weirdly stuff enough, like yeah. I feel like I'm not doing a very good job of like summarizing what happens in the story, but that's what happens. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, vampire. They're all vampires, including his sister who, who comes reappears. Back. She's not dead. And they hang the guy upside down. They stick a little spigot Which in, is his, awesome. in his neck. And they start, yeah, they start draining blood. So, yeah, I think even though you can see the ending <laughs> coming a mile away, I think this is a fun little yeah. story. And the guy is evil because he actually strangles the guy that found his sister. Yes. He kills the guy. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. you know, he's a bad man. But he, yeah, he comes to find his sister, and she's like, "You got to get out of here! Like, you can't be out after dark and everything." And the guy just can't imagine why. Yeah. What in the world? So yeah, it's it's not something you haven't seen before, or something that you can't guess that's coming. But I think it's still a fun I think, little story. Yeah, I think there's fun things that happen in it. Like yeah. I like the when they pull back the curtains oh, that's awesome. the mirrors. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and the spigot in his neck <laughs> for like 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 he's like a. <laughs> He's, like he's, he's a jug yeah, of wine or something. That's right, it's yeah. awesome. It's uh, really cool. Yeah, yeah. So I agree. I, yeah, I, I think overall pretty good. Yeah. Um, again, not really like he's not getting his comeuppance, which I'm probably gonna, uh, you know, complain about for. Well, he does. He, he gets his thing stuck in. Yeah, his Yeah, but neck. it's not he's, like it's not a. It's he's not, now a human. Yeah. Cast like you said. Yeah. And, well, it's not anything like he doesn't have like a fatal flaw that gets exploited right in the end kind of thing. Nah. Which is, you know, but good. Good. Yeah. All right. All right, moving on. The next story is called The Neat Job. It stars a guy named Terry Thomas who had a very distinctive gap between his two front teeth. And he's very British. He's very proper. And a woman named Glennis Johns. I saw that she just turned 98. Oh, happy birthday, Glennis. October the 5th, I think. She turned 98. Yeah, so she's she's still alive and kicking. And this one's from Shock Suspense Stories number one. Ah, Oh, number one. First number first one. issue. First yeah, issue. so so this story, Terry Thomas is an old bachelor. Pr- pretty darn old, yeah. if I do say so myself. He's never married, and he's used to living as a bachelor. He's used to living in the way that he is accustomed, <laughs> yeah. which is he, everything in its right place. Don't you know everything is orderly, everything is 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 what are you laughing at? 
Because that's you. I'm describing you. Yeah, no, no you a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Kirby would say a little bit. Uh, I'm laughing at at what goes on in the story with his wife. Yeah. So he finally he 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 marries a woman played by Glennis Johns, and of course, because he's used to living alone and he's used to having things his way. Yeah. The second she starts disturbing things. He gets upset. She doesn't put things back correctly. She spills something. She doesn't buy groceries. He's got a little checklist. He does. When they, you know, when they're out of spaghetti sauce, you know, you're supposed to erase the marks or whatever. She doesn't do any of that stuff. So he gets very, very offended. Finally, she gets fed up with it, and they're in the basement. Takes a hammer and just puts the <laughs> gives him a lobotomy. <laughs> yeah, hits it puts puts the bad end of the hammer, the the sharper end of the hammer. Yeah. I don't know what you call it. The part you pull out nails with. The part you pull out nails with. He the sticks claw? that I think right, it's the, claw. the claw right into the top of his head, and then she puts everything of him in yeah. the in its right place. So she puts jars of his body parts, and I thought I found it hilarious because it's got his distinctive teeth. Yeah, he's got his, his teeth. He's got, got his teeth. odds and ends. Yeah, so got his I, hands. This is a more comedic, I would say, I mean, yeah. if you can consider somebody getting a claw, you know, the claw part of the hammer in the head comedic, but it's played more for kind of laughs. It's yes. not, I mean, it's not scary, obviously. No. It's it's pretty silly. It It is. I So I like this one because I feel like, again, he has a fatal flaw. He's mm. super neat. Super neat. And then the end, he becomes that thing he is. Right. He's super neat. Now part of an orderly collection. Uh, I do think his wife, whenever, like, he's about to come home, goes infomercial kind of crazy oh, of so silly. tripping and messing yeah. everything up like it's it that was just like it's it's, it's very it's like the infomercial where the lady's all like ah yeah. like falling and stuff like that very very exaggerated yes. she's knocking over everything yes she's destroying things spilling things everything and she's all trying to get it cleaned up before he gets home because he's going to be very angry and of course he is very angry and he ends up getting murdered i feel her. like we could have seen that escalate a little bit more like I feel like her reaction to doing all that stuff, like, I didn't feel like he would have freaked out when he got home. I feel like he would have been mad, but I don't feel like he would have been, like, violent or yelling at her. Eh. But, uh, so that's that's my nitpick. I, I, think, I think he'd had enough. So I, I think, once again, I think this is a fun story. Yeah. I, I had a good chuckle, especially at his, his, his teeth neatly preserved in the jar along with his other odds and ends and organs. So moving on to the third story of the Vault of Horror. It's called... This trick will kill you. Yes. And this is from Tales from the Crypt number 33. Stars Kurt Jurgens, who would play the villain in The Spy Who Loved Me a few years after this. And his wife is played by Dawn Adams. I don't really know what she was in. Sorry. <laughs> Not familiar with her. <laughs> Not familiar with her repertoire. Her okay. CD. So this one takes place in India. It does. And it's basically Exotic. a couple are in India. He sees a couple of... Uh, of people from Indian India uh, doing various tricks and stuff like that. And like he's able street, to street magicians, street, street kind of magicians like, yeah. and he's able to call it out. He's a, he's a guy that's good about figuring things out until he comes across one, which is the rope and the basket trick. And he can't figure out how it works. Mm -hmm. So he invites the, he tries to buy it from the lady that's doing it. And she's yeah. not selling it. She because, plays her little instrument and yeah. the rope comes out just like a cobra. And and comes out and she's able to climb it like she a is. like I was like I bet she was good in gym class she was she was <laughs> she could do the rope climbs she can do the rope climb very quickly uh, so he tries to purchase it from her she's not selling it it's a thing she inherited from her mother and her mother inherited from her mother and on and on and on yeah so he tells his wife about it and they hatch a plan they're gonna have her come to the hotel room and then they're gonna kill her for the trick. And that's why it's called that trick will kill you. This trick will kill you. And well, and you, I don't know if you mentioned they're magicians themselves, and they're oh. they want to steal this act okay. or this this rope basket trick and bring it back with them, and it's going to make them rich. It's going to make them millionaires. But of course, they invite the woman back to their hotel room, and things don't go as planned. They do kill the woman, but weirdly enough, you see her again after that. So yeah. I was like, did they? I was very confused. I thought by that. that was like her ghost. I wasn't sure. I, I couldn't tell what what it was. Maybe it was her ghost, but they didn't. To me, they didn't do a good job of communicating the fact that it was a spirit. Yeah. I was like, "What? Does she not actually die? Is that her twin sister?" I didn't get that. <laughs> but nevertheless, that's not really important to the the story. The story, of course, winds up with the rope takes on a life of its own and strength. Well, first of all, the lady climbs up to the top of the rope yeah. and just vanishes. <laughs> and then there's a the little blood pool of blood right, yeah. that appears on the ceiling. And then the man, played by Kurt Jurgens runs around and the, the rope is kind of 
Indiana Jones bullwhipping him a yeah. little bit, and yes. then it wraps around him and strangles him. And the trick indeed did kill the two of them. Yeah, so, I didn't think it was. I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of this one. Uh, yeah, once again, I think you can see the end. I mean, you know, you know, the rope is going to kill them in some yeah. way because they're they're evil people who plan on killing this poor innocent girl and stealing her trick. So I think you can see it coming a mile away. Yeah, I, this is probably one of the weaker, probably the weakest yeah. story, possibly. Uh, maybe I don't know. We haven't and moved on to the next two. And if I was going to remake this, weird. I would have front loaded it more with them killing people. To get tricks, right? Something, maybe, maybe a little bit. I mean, it, and it then does, that way, it does kind of depict him as a jerk because he yeah. calls out the guy, how the guy's doing the tricks in front of this big crowd of people. He's like, "No, it's fake," and he's like, kind of yeah. pulling. I mean, so he's a when jerk he's, when he's stabbing the basket of the little boy in there. Right? It, they could probably do that better. Probably, yeah. probably do it a little bit more. Make make me a little more of a jerk. <laughs> yeah, of a, of a punk. Think of yeah. I like I said, I would I would make it where he's. Killing a bunch of people to get these tricks to become famous, then finally, you know, the someone kills him or the trick kills him. You know, yeah. like, you know, like I said, fatal flaw. Something exploited. Or he, they, they take the thing back to America. They do the trick live on stage, and he gets murdered right there in front of oh, people. Something like that. Yes, I want that one. I don't know. Something. All right, let's rewrite Tales from Crypt Thirty Three. All right, the next right. one is called Bargaining in Death. This one's from Tales from the Crypt number twenty eight, I believe. And this one also stars... Does it star John Hall Elliott? No, or, that's the final story. That's the final This one. one stars a guy named Michael Craig. Okay. Yeah. He's and uh, do you want to give a synopsis? You're better at that than I. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so Michael Craig plays a character who ingests some sort of substance that makes him appear dead for, I think, 24 hours. Yeah, I think so. So he's cooked up a plan to appear dead so he can get some insurance, some life insurance. His friend is then going to dig him up 24 hours or within 24 hours so he doesn't suffocate because yeah. he's going to be buried six feet underground. But his friend plans on just absconding with the money, yeah. naturally. Once again, I think you can probably see that coming. His friend's not actually going to show up. But, but you've got two medical students who are frustrated at the fact that they don't have enough time to spend with cadavers so that they can spend time kind of dissecting as you cadavers. Do. <laughs> so they are going to be, as they call themselves, ghouls. They want to steal a body with the help of the local grave digger, a fresh body, mind you, from the local grave site. Or, uh, you know, And so, of course, Michael Craig's character has just been buried. But the problem is he's not actually dead. I don't know, once again, that you can't necessarily spot what's coming at the end of this but what i do like about this story is that his friend who's absconding with the money gets killed yeah. because the two men they end up digging up the or the grave digger digs up the body he opens the coffin the guy's still alive and he lets out a scream the two men are so scared they run out into the middle of the road and his partner who's going to tree. run off with the money runs into a tree and his car explodes yeah. and so he gets his comeuppance he, does. he doesn't get away scot-free with the money so i like that little added sting to it yeah and also michael craig gets uh killed by the grave decapitated the grave digger's like well the body's not dead well now it is <laughs> yeah, yeah. and so he ends up killing it's like all right he's ready sorry about the head so yeah. it's once again kind of a com almost comedic kind of thing but i thought this story was good i like I that it. i think there was a couple of added twists that i wasn't expecting in, mm -hmm. in this story because i think normally you would think it played out would be he's not he's you know you would think that he's not dead and, you know, it's the end. But I like that there's a couple added things. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it kind of goes on and on and on. It just feels like and then and then and then and then for me. Yeah. But I do think it's it's solid. Yeah. I, I, I like this story. So thumbs, thumbs up for this one. This this was, this is better after this trick will kill you. This one, this one I feel yeah. like is much better. So now moving on to the fourth and final story, which does star yes. Marcus Brody, Denholm Elliott. Is the actor's name, but he played Marcus Brody in Indi the Indiana Jones. He movies. does, and that's how everyone refers to him. Right, this household. Uh, so it's, yeah, go go. You're going to say it's drawn and quartered, and I'm going to say this is Tales from the Crypt number 26, and basically this follows a painter that lives in Haiti, I believe, mm -hmm. and he's upset that a a um a, a patron of his has sold his painting. Apparently, he sold it to him cheap, and he's resold it for a lot of money. Yep. So he decides to get his revenge, and his revenge is, is that he basically gets a Haitian to voodoo his hand, mm -hmm. I believe is the correct term, 
and he Put can some voodoo on that hand, and he uses that to to basically kill his patron and the his cohorts, the patron's cohorts that have uh, basically conned him out of his money. Yeah, and he he can kill them because he paints their portrait, yeah. and then whatever he does to that portrait happens. Actually, He's it, Santa, it doesn't have to be a portrait of a person; it could be a piece of bread. He Santa Jaws them basically. He what? Santa Jaws. He them. Santa Jawses them. Yes, he does. <laughs> I I didn't think of that, but that's good. Yes, he does. And we, we should mention the painter himself is played by Mr. Tom Baker. He was the fourth Doctor Who. Oh, he was Doctor Who for a long was. time. Yep. I didn't recognize him with a beard. Yeah, he look, well, he looks totally different. He he doesn't look like the traditional Doctor Who character. The Doctor Who character that he played. But yeah, so he paints these. There's three of them. He paints their all three of their portraits. But he also has a portrait of himself that he painted. Uh oh! I mean, yeah. You see where we're going with this? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I think I mean, look, he painted a portrait of himself before he got the voodoo. If he didn't mess but with it, it's retroactive. Is I, it? Retroactive? I, I mean, I, well, I, I mean, I. That's how I explain it. That's, I, it, that's I figured, the only explanation. I figured that when he drew the red mark on there, yeah, that's when that painting became there part of go. him, right? There you go. And I'm like, dude, you're an idiot. Don't there do that. Go. And so, yeah, basically, you know what's going to happen. He basically is carrying around. He's going to kill these guys by their portraits and he's carrying around a portrait of himself. So yeah. you kind of know what's going to happen to him. I think what ends up happening is kind of interesting, kind of fun. But what yeah, about especially the guy who gets his hands chopped off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, hilarious. Yeah. Or the guy with the thing in his eye and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what did you think? What'd you, what was your, your take on the safe thing? Was he suffocating? Because remember, like, yeah, he locks he, in the safe. He kind thing. of start like, yeah. I don't know if he was, I don't know if that, or if he just was nervous after he he had uh, killed, uh, he, because he leaves Marcus Brody, I'm just going to refer to him as yeah, Marcus yeah. Brody, he leaves Marcus Brody's office and he leaves his watch there. And I don't know if he just starts getting, panicking because he's left his watch there and I that's why he he's, panics. or maybe the safe, yeah. he couldn't breathe, his pa- portrait I'll, couldn't breathe, maybe. I want to say, I want, the way I remember it is, he panics, then he remembers he forgot his watch. Mm-hmm. So maybe. I get, so I was wondering if like he was running out of oxygen in the safe, and that's why. It maybe it was. Yeah, it, that, that was. That I think was, you could interpret it that, that way. Was interesting. Yeah, but I like how basically like you know like some uh, I guess some turpentine and a and a post and things fall on his own portrait, mm-hmm. and then he runs out in the street, and then he gets, <laughs> he gets run over. His his dummy gets yeah. run over. It looks comically. Yeah. It looks very comical. I mean, I feel like this is a pretty standard story like we have like the tale of Dorian Gray kind of stuff I, yeah I was gonna say yeah, that's the first thing that comes to mind obviously. so I don't feel like this one's that inventive but I think it's done well like I, I think it's yeah. interesting and I, it's so, good so and I think for me that sums up the entire movie and it also sums up Tales from the Crypt the movie that, that Amicus made the year before this I think both Tales from the Crypt and Vault of Horror are both very solid anthology yeah. films. And honestly, the other movies that I mentioned that they've done, the anthology stuff, House of the Triple Oath, Fear on the Grave, Asylum, I've not seen. Mm-hmm. So maybe we'll next do, year. We do those, uh, yeah, we do those next year, next October. But yeah, I think Vault of Horror, just like Tales from the Crypt, I think it's a solid, maybe not every story is amazing, but especially coming off from a whisper to a scream, these stories... A, they have they've got a bigger budget, yeah. And they've got they've got bigger stars. I mean, even though Clue Gula Gula people like that, you know, they were, you know, they're well known actors, but you know, and they just, also excuse me, they're saying. they're also basing it off a of good source material too. Absolutely, like yeah. I feel like Absolutely. these comic books wouldn't these com- graphic novels, comic books wouldn't exist if the stories weren't that good, right? And they're fetid, so I think they have a leg up that they could uh, that they could use that as a jumping off point, right? Couldn't agree more. But yeah, I think this is solid. It sounds like you, you're you yeah. in the same boat. Yeah, this is a good, very good anthology film. I agree. You, it's definitely not a waste of your time, like from Whisper to a Screen. Not the biggest fan of the rapper. I feel like you can see that a mile away, but that was my, that, that'd probably be my only big kind of, well, yeah, my only big complaint about it. Yeah, but overall, good movie. Only five critical reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, but it's 80% fresh, but a 51% audience score. I don't know. Maybe they like From a Whisper to a Screen better. Who knows? <laughs> and Leonard Malton, mm, so-so on this one. He gives it two and a half stars. Again, mm-hmm. once again, this predates Siskel and Ebert. The no, no Siskel and Ebert review. All but, right. Yep. So that was The Vault of Horror. Um, so we did uh, From Whisper to Screen Monday, Vault of Horror today, and on Friday, we're going to finish up our whole... October Horror Movie Fest and our anthology movies, horror movies with... We're moving into the 21st century. We're going to do Video Home System or VHS VHS. for short. So stay tuned for that on Friday. 
Uh, so if you've seen Vault of Horror, let us know what you think. Leave your comments down below. If you're watching us YouTube or shoot us an email if you're listening to us through your podcasting app, that is uh, realshame at gmail.com. And stay tuned Friday as we figure out if we want to watch this VHS or if we want to just record over it. You know, <laughs> put that masking tape over the side of it and just record over that VHS with something different. And we'll see you soon, guys. We'll see you Friday. Bye. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.